Ko heko rangi te maunga, ko waia pō te awa, ko ngāti prau te iwi. Tēnā koutou katoa. When people die, a lot of them are frightened. As I am, because you don't know where you're going. All you know is this mythical place called Hawaii. I moved to Te Puyo Hospital because my family had been here, had been well treated. Mm. Kai te akoe. Hi. I get visits from lots of people. This is a lovely spot to be in. Since I got sick, I started fretting for home. Rakituka is a little place by a river. It had wonderful views of the mountain Hikurangi. There are 13 children in the family, and we all grew up speaking Māori. And if you wanted to go anywhere, it, there was no car, no bicycle, or anything. you caught a horse. We realised that going to boarding school was an escape, and those were our learning centres of Pākehā learning. And it was hard going, but we survived. And I won an AFS scholarship, which took me to high school in Oregon. And that's where I got a feeling about it being worthwhile fighting for things that keep people upright. Kerry lived most of her life in Wellington, initially as a teacher, but then uh, as a lecturer at Teachers College. And she was involved in the arts, in drama, um, in writing and in film. So she, she was definitely high profile and seen as a very um, progressive woman and very important in terms of the Māori scene in, in Wellington. Once she left to go teaching, she didn't return to Rangitukia until she retired in her late 50s. I knew I wasn't very well. And I thought it was cancer. Because I was busy diagnosing myself, as a lot of our people do. They said to me, hey, how do you to talk with you? Go to the doctor. They don't tell me directly what disease I had or they thought I had. They told a little group of the family, but I was brushed off when they had a hui without me. Living in Rangitukia, because of a number of health issues, became unworkable. You want to go down here today? Yeah. And she was moved into the hospice here at Tapuya Springs for what we were told was palliative care. Being home and being cared for by home people. I never thought it would be important, but it is. I'm worried about who's going to look after the mokupunas and what will the world be like for them. Being remembered and hoping what you stood for was going to give the next generation a focus. So they keep you know, the circle going. Don't cry for me, get focused on the future. Everybody has to go sometime. It's something that I think every Māori faces up to. And all you have to make sure is that your canoe is ready and that you've got your paddle on board. Because you've got to have an ending to the story.